Hey, here I am. Got one of my babies here. This guy's about five years old. We're going to show you some baby boa umbilical cords and belly buttons. So stay tuned for that. Early on a Saturday morning, looks like we have some blood boas and some Key West and hypo blood combos. Father is a Key West, het blood, het VPI. And the mom is a hypo, het blood. So there's a lot of stuff going on in these. And it looks like we got a pretty good number of bloods. They're kind of moving around a little bit because I'm talking. But anyways, yeah, I'm pretty happy. Pretty nice litter. Looks like I got seven or eight bloods. Must be around 18 babies total. First time I bred this female. She's about seven years old and about six, a little over six feet. Prime time for breeding, right? There's one here, still in his membrane. Get him out a little bit, maybe shoot some more video. It's a good morning. So this is a Key West which I produced five years ago. It's a male and he is het VPI and het blood. So his first litter was born three years ago and it proved, uh, proved to be het blood, which I knew it would be because his mother was a blood. He was born here. And this year, the babies we're gonna show you in a few minutes came from this guy and a female that I bought oh, about three years earlier Hoping to make some blood sometime down the road with maybe a Key West head blood or something else cool. So, so some people don't know this, but boa constrictors do not lay eggs. They have live birth, but they develop what is essentially an egg. It's called an ova. It's round, and it contains all of the ingredients necessary to make a baby boa. At fertilization, after a male has bred a female, the ova becomes fertilized and all of the nutrients need, needed to raise that baby are included within that ova. So the snake has an umbilical cord just like uh, you did, but there is no true pl placental connection. That's easy for me to say, right? There's no placental connection. They don't get, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but they don't become attached to the womb. Or the uterus inside of mom where they receive nutrients from the mom all the nutrients are already contained within that ova and they have an umbilical cord which is in reptiles it's called an umbilicus and they receive all their nutrients through that and their blood vessels within that the blood vessels go within the wall of the ova the ova along with all the rest of the ova are in the ova duct and the lining of the walls of the oviduct is oxygen rich and provides oxygen to the babies. And other than that, there may be some fluid transfer, like water transfer to the babies from the mom. But otherwise, there's nothing else. And uh, it's really kind of an amazing thing. Kind of an amazing thing. Anyways, time to check out the babies, right? Or continue checking out the babies. Let's see. These are some blood boas from this breeding. The breeding was a Key West uh, double het blood VPI. Now the mother didn't have any VPI genes. She was a hypo het blood. So we weren't looking for any VPI stuff. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Right now, this guy is getting ready to break out of the membrane. He's got that pulled tight on his head. Oh, it slid, slid back over the back of his neck. He's right about there. Just come out for his first breath of air. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool when you see that with baby boas. And uh, here's one that has not broken out yet. This one is not a blood. This one is still in the membrane. Oh, there he is. He's got his head out too. I guess I missed that. Got his head out on the bottom. Very cool. Now you'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. 
I know it's shocking, right? No blue gloves. Well, I'm not blue wearing gloves because these guys are cleaner probably than my, my wife's dog's mouth. <laughs> Which we all know is one of the cleanest areas in the world. Even my wife's little doggy. So, I do wash my hands when I'm done. They can be a little sticky in this baby boa goo. But it's fun. This is a really great litter, by the way. Uh, usually with a head-to-head -head breeding, you get about one out of four when you're breeding simple recessives together to produce visuals of that simple recessive. In this case, she only had 26 babies, which is a nice size litter, pretty good size litter. And 10 of them were bloods. So the odds were dramatically in leaning in our favor, which is exciting. We like to see that. And uh, these are hypo bloods and bloods. This one is a blood right here. It's a little darker. And then this one is a hypo blood. This is a hypo blood. Looks like most of these are hypo bloods. This is a hypo blood. And I'll see if I can pick some of these up so you get a better look at them. Look at that little baby, little baby blood boa. If you watch closely, you see his tongue. It's pretty much all black. Just the tips of it are a little bit light. I think some of the hypos will have a lighter tongue, although I haven't produced hypo bloods before. And this is a hypo blood. They're more washed out. Overall, you can see the tail has a lot less black in it. See this tail? Very little black versus this guy that we just looked at. He's got a lot of black in his tail, so that's how you can tell the difference between the hypos and then just the bloods, hypo bloods and just bloods. Here's another one. But I know you're all here to see a belly button, right? A snake belly button. So let's let's check out a snake belly button. This is going to be cool. So these babies are only a few hours old. From the time they're born, they're on their own. And when they're in their mom, they're nourished through a belly button just like you are before you were born. Now we'll see if we can get this one to cooperate and show her belly because they like to be upright. There is what's left of the umbilica umbilicus, which is a long tube that they get nourishment and oxygen through. And right there, <laughs> right there is the belly button. Right there is the belly button where it connects in. There's a snake belly button. Pretty awesome, huh? This shows the umbilicus. And this is where the baby gets nourishment, is through this little tube. Right before they're born, it gets very, very thin. So this one is very thin. And that's what's left. So this is the umbilical cord. Each of us had an umbilical cord from where we received nourishment from our mothers. And these are no exception. And you can see the little belly button right there. On this little baby. Now we're going to try and show you the umbilical cord on this baby right here which just broke out of the membrane. And these babies are not as small as they look. I mean, these are small for normal. Uh, I just have really big hands, so <laughs> it makes them look really small. But uh, they're normal size babies. And this one, we're gonna see if we can see its umbilical cord and its belly button. It just broke out of the membrane and now it's ready to scurry, of course. 
He doesn't know this is his big showbiz break. So there is the umbilical cord. They do not like to be upside down, so he's trying to right himself. There's the umbilical cord. There's the umbilical cord, and it goes down into the ova, where they absorb all of their nutrition. Now, an interesting thing that a lot of breeders don't know, that little snotty knot right there, if you cut this cord beyond this point, they don't bleed out of it. If you cut that cord closer to the body, they will bleed. Now, the more fully developed they are, the less they bleed, and the thinner the umbilicus is. He's just not going to hold still. But uh, when they're a little bit early and that umbilical cord is still quite thick, if you cut that too close to the body, they can actually bleed to death out of that cord. So I recommend cutting it beyond the other side of this little knotty thing, which has check valves in it. Basically, it keeps them from bleeding to death out of there. So not close to the body. Some people tie a string around it. You know, there's no right way or wrong way to do it, but this is the way I do it. And sometimes if it does start to bleed, I keep a little flour on hand, and I'll put flour all over it, which seems to inhibit the bleeding a little bit. It's kind of an interesting thing to, uh, to do. So here's all the bloods. Bloods and hypo bloods. And then there's one that's not. Anyways, they're pretty cool. They were all hiding under the paper. I wanted to get a last look at them. It's quite a pile. Quite a pile of puppies here. But I want to show you what happens. The umbilical cord. This will dry up to nothing. It'll look like a little stick. And then it'll fall off. So you don't have to tie it in a knot or do anything fancy with it. These guys have a teeny, teeny bit of yolk in their belly. Not very much. But uh, I'll put them on heat. Put them in a rack. The back of the rack is heated. I keep it about 92, 93 degrees so they can go back right up against the heat if they want to and get as warm as they want to to cook that yolk down. Shouldn't be any problem because this isn't a significant amount of yolk that they've got. Look at that blood right there. That thing is cool. All that black in the tail. But anyways, if you want me to keep these videos coming, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, share it. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. Share it with your friends. The quicker we can get this whole thing going to the monetized state, the more I'll be encouraged to go to the effort of uh, doing all these videos. And uh, at some point here, I think it's going to go crazy. But uh, let's get it going. I need your help. So hop on it. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.